Praise God. I thank you for the news that we just heard that yes, somebody got Lord. saved on the gospel track that we hand out, Lord. We thank you for all things. I pray now that you would be with me in this service. May that you would help me where I lack, and I thank you for that. You're always there. There, well, we're, 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 we're weak, you're strong, Lord, and we thank you for that. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a wonderful thing, huh? To yes, have, sir. To hear that somebody got saved off the gospel track. Amen. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. This morning we're going to be reading out of 1 Kings, but well, I'm going to go over to 1 Corinthians real quick if you want to go there with me. Actually, 2 Corinthians in uh, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. With all the saints which are in all Achaia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Yeah. For God is our comforter, Amen. and we are supposed to be helping others the most we can. Yes. Comfort them through the knowledge that God shares with us. Sure. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering, which we also suffer. Yeah. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Yeah. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that, as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through sufferings, we're going to sure. go through trials and tribulations, but the one thing that we know is that Jesus is our comforter, mm -hmm. and that he is always there for us. That's right. And we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were passed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. So here we see that Paul and the apostles are in, in so much trials and tribulations that they're, they're questioning in life and they don't yeah. know, they want to die yeah. in this next verse. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, Amen. but in God which raises Amen. the dead. So uh, that's just what I wanted to get that out, and we thank God every day that where we're weak, He's strong. Where we lack, He picks up, and we thank you for that. God. Yeah, Amen. Turn over to uh, turn over to Second Kings chapter twenty-one. Second Kings chapter twenty-one. We're going to be speaking about the life of Josiah today, but first I'd like to read on some of the two prior kings before him. His father and his grandfather. Second Kings chapter 21. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. And reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephaziah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Wow. After the abominations of the heathen. Yeah. Whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. But he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. Yeah. And he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven, in two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire, and observe and observed times, and used enchantments, oh my. and dealt with familiar spirits there and wizards. Go. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which the Lord said to David, and to Solomon his son, In this house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen, out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Amen. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers. Only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. 
Wow. So here we see that Manasseh, it, he's questionably the worst king that yeah. Judah ever had. That's right. He had the longest reign and just happened to be one of the worst kings. Wow. We see that he built up altars unto Baal. Right. His father Hezekiah had already went through trying to cleanse the nation a little bit, destroying all the altars yep. and stuff like that. And here Manasseh comes and rebuilds all this stuff that his father had taken down. Yeah. Verse number 10, the Lord spake by his servants and prophets, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, hath done these abominations, and hath done wickedly above all the Amorites did, which mm. were before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with wow. his idols. So here we see that Manasseh, king of Judah, has done all these abominations, and God tells us that he is more wicked than the Amorites, right. who we know are wicked people. Yeah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. Amen. That's the power of God right there. Yes, Whoever amen. hears of it, his ears will start tingling. Yeah. And I will stretch over Jerusalem, the line of Samaria, and in the plummet of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a ditch. Wow. Wiping it. And turning it upside down. He's saying what he's going to do with the nation because of what, how they've been dealing. How they've been sacrificing to other gods. How they've been bowing down to other gods. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance. And deliver them into the hand of their en enemies. And they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. Wow. This is the response and the wrath of God for an adulterous nation. Because they have done that which was evil in my sight, and have provoked me to anger, since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day. Wow. <laughs> Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much, till that he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Mm. Besides his sin, wherewith he made Judah to sin, in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. So, He's a horrible leader here, but the people of Israel are still falling. Yes. I just want to say, Joe, I think it's amazing uh, that how God tells him that he's going to bring the evil upon him in yeah. verse 12. And then he literally says, I'm going to forsake Jerusalem. But yet, five verses earlier, he said, I'll never take my name out of Jerusalem. Right. God dealing with Israel is like what's happening today with them. Right. They don't right. listen. The no. enemies come. Yep. God says it's constantly dealing with someone right. in one way or another, through Amen. war, through storms, yeah. through different things. It's like reading the newspaper, amen? Right. This right here is what's happening today. Yeah. 17, now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and his sin that he sinned, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the gardens of his own house, in the gardens of Uzzah, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was 20 and 2 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulamet, the daughter of Haruz, of Jotba. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, Whoa. as his father Manasseh did. So here he's following in his father's right. footsteps. Yeah. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in. And he served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. Remember just a couple verses ago, it says that he made his son to pass through the fire. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I'm pretty sure it's it's, it's uh, relating to a burnt sacrifice and stuff. Dealing with Moloch. Yes. Burnt yeah. sacrifices. Yep. Moloch, Moloch was the god that had the arms crossed. They throw babies on it and yes. burn them alive. That's passing through the fire. He said he made his son yeah. pass through the fire. Yeah. He made his son at a young age, and now his son is following in his footsteps. Right. Mm. Majority of the time. Children will follow in their parents' footsteps. Yes. That's the old saying, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Yeah. But it's not always the case. We'll That's see right. here in a minute. Amen. Free will. Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulamath, and the daughter of Haruz of Jodba. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the ways that his father walked in, and served the idols that his father served, and worshipped and he forsake the Lord, God of his fathers, and walk not in the way of the Lord. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. So here's his own servants right. 
uh, God used his own servants here yeah. to get rid of a bad king You're so right. that Josiah could take over. Amen. And, have them. Amen. and the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Am. And the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in the sepulchre in the garden of Luzah. And Josiah, his son, reigned in his stead. So just a quick little recap. Um, Ammon was just like his father Manasseh. Yeah. Manasseh reigned for 55 years, was questionably one of the worst kings that they ever had. And in 21-2, he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. After all the abominations of the heathen, he built up the altars unto Baal. Yeah. He 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 built back up the groves. Right. And he made his son pass through the fire. My, my. His son took after him, yeah. followed in his footsteps, and did that which evil in the sight of the Lord. Right. Now we're on chapter 22. Josiah. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adaya, a Boscot. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in all the ways of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Yeah. So at this point, I'm questioning myself, what happened? How did it go from all these bad kings to, to now he does what's right in the, in, the, in the eyes of the Lord? Notice that when he says... He walked in all the ways of David, his father. Yes. It doesn't say Ammon, his father. Right. It goes back to David. He's going right. to David, a good king, and right. the apple of God died. Yes. And he turned on side to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah, he's 26 years old here, mm -hmm. that the king set Shaphan, the son of Azalea, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Yeah. And let them give it to the doers of the work, which is in the house of the Lord, yeah. to repair the breaches of the house. Yeah. So here, Josiah is... Something's burning in him enough that he wants to repair the house of the Lord. He's right. rebuilding it. Yes. Unto the carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hewed stone to repair the house. How that there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. Amen. So, <laughs> before, people must have been doing unfaithfully and maybe stealing a little bit of money because yes, exactly. the king here is getting involved in making sure things are happening how they should. I read, like when he was talking about in the end of chapter 21, how like the servants came against him. Right. I think yeah. I actually said to you before, Pop, that like it felt like I was reading the same thing over and over again. It was different names, but the same thing kept yes. happening. Everybody was doing people on the side names. of the Lord. Yeah. But then the servants would come against them and they'd end up laying with their fathers down right. in the ground. See a lot of that same stuff in the kings. Right. Kings. And right. I read in Kings 2 where it says that they got money from like a priest or something like that and was supposed to build up the Walls. whatever yeah. and didn't do it and kept the money. Right. And yeah. So, so does this happen over and over? Over and over. And don't forget when it says, is it not written in Chronicles? It's right. telling you that there's more written in the book of Chronicles about okay. that king. So it may be given a little bit more detail in Chronicles yeah. right. about things. But over and over again, Joe, and you know it as you're studying that. They do bad, God sends evil, they either repent, and if they do, they get a good king, and then if not, they get a worse king. Oh, right. So, over and over. They, don't seem to be, they must not repent much, because there's not too many good kings. Right. Okay, verse 8. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. This kept popping out to me, the book, the book, yeah. the book. Like we still have the book. They might Amen. not have had the, the New Testament back then, but they sure had the books of the law. And we have this book, so we can place this book in this story Amen. for us. Now, uh, between verses 8 and 16, the book is mentioned seven times my, my. in eight verses. Yeah. 
And Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. So obviously they hadn't had the book the whole time. Right. Because they found it. And those are the books of the law. Yeah. Genesis, not, you know, the book. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe shewed the king, saying, Hilkiah the high priest delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. My mind. Here's a perfect example of, it doesn't matter what Shaphan came and said, it's when he read that's the words right. of this book, Amen. that's what brought conviction. Amen. It's what brought him to have a burden. And he, I get a picture of Josiah here. He's renting his clothes. He's, he's picturing the past of his nation and, and, and all the abominations right. that they've been involved in. And he's getting a picture of it, and it's bothering him. So yes. he's, he's burdened here. He rents his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest, and Ahiakim the son of Shaphan, and Akor the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go ye inquire of the Lord for me. So it bothered him enough. Yes. He chose his man to go inquire of the Lord. He didn't go to the Lord himself. Go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, and to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. Wow. So Hilkiah the priest, and Hiakim, and Akbar, and Shaphan, and Isaiah went unto Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Haras, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. So the king is now having these men go and see a prophetess to, to inquire of the Lord. It's the prophet's college, too. Remember we were talking about that? Yes. That's where they all were together. All the prophets yeah. are there? That's where the school of prophets okay. in college, yeah. And not just prophet, prophetess, yeah, prophetess. too, huh? <laughs> Yeah, not often. I was reading something, in and in the, uh, some of the corrupt translations, they change it to prophet. Yeah. Yeah, completely take the feminineness of it right. and make it into a man, which right. just changes the whole history right. of the story. Exactly. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, the king, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read, because they have forsaken me yep. and have burnt incense unto other it gods, is that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Wow. Here we see that his wrath shall not be quenched. But he does a little something here. And, and uh, just keep your mind on that the words of this book is what's bringing in conviction yes, to this place. Right. It's not anything else. He reads the Bible. He makes his people read the Bible. He believes the Bible right. or the book. Yes. Their Bible, so to speak. He believes it, and he's now making actions to, to fix it. First, yes. he rebuilt the house of the Lord, right? the structure, and now he's rebuilding the moral of right. this country. Amen. That's good. Because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, Thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord of God Israel, as touching the word which thou hast heard. Talking about that book. That's right. Because thine heart was tender, Amen. and thou hast humbled thyself Amen. before the Lord. When thou heardest when I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, Amen. saith the Lord. Amen. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto the fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. Lord. And then I shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Amen. 
So just, and I don't know what he said. It's his heart was tender. He humbled himself. Yeah. He could have been hardened like like the rest of his country, but he 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 was humble. He softened his heart. He was right. tender. Yeah. And the Lord can really do something with that. Amen. And the, and obviously, the Holy Spirit had been guiding Josiah his whole life. Amen. He goes from having people like his father and his grandfather. There's a curse on the nation for all the things they've been doing and something. And as a young child, it guides him to do what's right in the sight of the Lord. Amen. He didn't have his dad to follow in his footsteps. His dad was dead. He was young, eight years old when he started to reign. Right. So it's obvious that something was guiding him in the right way. Yes. I believe that it's the Holy Spirit. Especially considering that it was prophesied that this ruler would come and do all this yes. stuff. So it's, it's really wonderful that God puts it together the way he does, and he's doing a great job putting it together for us. 23. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him. The priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great, and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant. Yeah. which was found in the house of the Lord. So if you read all the words, it probably wasn't just a quick little reading. It was probably there all day. Yeah. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, to keep his commandments Amen. and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul, to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. Amen. So the king here is making a new covenant because his, his country had has been in abomination to the Lord for so long. He's making a new covenant with the Lord yeah. that they're going to do what's right in his sight. Amen. And, and live for God and do what's after the book. Do what's in the book. Right. The book of the law for them. Amen. Walk after the Lord and keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul, and to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them into Bethel. Amen. And he put down the idolatrous priest whom the king of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burnt incense unto Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the planets, and to all the hosts of heaven. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the book of Kidron and burned it at the book of Kidron, and stamped it to small powder, and oh, cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. He's making a point here. Yeah, he's serious, huh? <laughs> Revival's coming to this. Amen! That's right. It, and it's through the book that does it. That's right. He brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah, and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense, from Geba to Beersheba. So yeah. all throughout Jerusalem, he's traveling, he's breaking down altars, he's slaying the, the 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 high priests that were that were leading the nation wrongly. Amen. And the high places of the gates that were in eight, and the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, were drawn a man's left hand as the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem. But they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of children of Hinnon, that no man might make his son or his daughter pass through the fire to Moleth. Here's that fire again. Yep, that's Moloch. Moloch. Yep. And he took away the horses that the king of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Moleth the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the king of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook. 
Kidron. The brother Joe, I was noticing there in verse number four that they're taking all that stuff out of the house of the Lord. Yeah. How's all that stuff was in, in the, house the actual the house of the Lord? That's what Manasseh did. Hilkiah, I mean, uh, Hezekiah cleaned it. Yes. And then Manasseh and his son brought all that stuff back into the house of the Lord. So they're literally going into the house of the Lord, right. taking all this stuff out, bringing it Forbid. down to Kidron, smashing it into powder, then taking it and putting it on the graves of the people. Yeah. Woo! This guy's serious about yeah. getting rid of that sin. Amen? Yes. And if we look at this for ourselves about the altars, we need to break down the altars in our life. Did you notice verse 7 with the Sodomites? I didn't hear you read that one. He break down the house of the Lord of the uh, houses of the Sodomites that were in the house of oh, the Lord. Oh, I must have skipped it. Where the women were wove hangings for the grove. Look at verse 7. He break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. Yes, remember when I came to you and I asked, so Sodomites have something to do with Baal? Yes. That's because of this verse, what right. I was asking him. So the Sodomites, though, were near the house of the Lord. They're hanging up those pagan things right. that they hang up, yeah. like we've seen in the horror stories. Yeah. This is what's taking place right outside of the house of the Lord. They're doing, doing this. For the house of the Lord. And in the house of the Lord. But the Sodomites. Right. And we know that has to do with homosexuality and such and violence. And you break down the house of them. You know, you're running them out. Houses. Those Sodomites have something to do with the evil that has transpired throughout our whole history of man. They have to do with Baal. Right? Yeah. So yeah, they worship Baal and Moloch. A lot of spots I see Sodomites and it mentions Baal right next to it. But don't forget when the Baal prophets were up there, 450 of them. Uh, Elijah tells him, go and cut yourself. Maybe your God's going to the bathroom. That's what he says. He's relieving himself, right? But they were up there and they would get naked, cut themselves, and then mix their blood with each other by rubbing against each other. And they would have sexual orgies while they were worshiping God, doing, stop, doing homosexual acts. It's almost to say we're going against God every way possible. Right. Yeah. Against the natural man and woman, man and man, woman and woman, man and beast, mm -hmm. woman and beast. They're doing everything to say to God, here's the middle finger. Yeah, pretty much, right? Pretty much. But praise the Lord. It's, so it's Sodom and Gomorrah was a did they worship Baal? They did. They had Baal worship there. Absolutely. And Moloch, the, yeah. the god of uh, abortion, I guess we could call him. Because that's what they did. They took babies, and they would take the baby when it was born, and they would throw it on the arms of the god Moloch, and it would burn the baby alive. And they would do it, and every once in a while, we'd get a soft king that would go, let's have the beating of the drum while we're doing it, so you wouldn't have to hear the baby scream. Yes. Now, this was done... Publicly, with thousands of people around, you read the verses. They act like they didn't know what they were doing. They had carpenters, they had yeah. masons, they had all kinds of skilled craftsmen. Mm -hmm. These were not people running around like cavemen. But there's a lot of sodomites, and that's when you get them sodomites. That thinking of changing what's natural. Once that gets in there, there's trouble. I don't know much about that, Moloch. Is it? God. Yeah, it's a God that they uh, uh, that set up, and it's a God that I believe has something to do with the moon. And what they would do is they would take this God, big God, a seal, the too? at the grove. The grove is a place they'd set out in the woods. Yeah. With, yeah. And then they would put that up, and they would have Moloch there, and they would take the baby and offer it to Moloch and throw it on the arms and have it burn. Much like the Hindus take their babies and bring them to the alligator. And they take the best baby they got, the best looking, right. strongest, and they give that to the alligators as a sacrifice to the mm -hmm. gods. And the alligator being a serpent, and right. you know that the <laughs> reptilians right. and all yeah. that stuff. But. Oh, hey, man, good stuff. Okay, verse twelve. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, mm. did the king beat down? Break them down from the fence and cast dust of them into the brook of Kidron. If we have altars in our life, it's our yeah. job to break them down right. before God, make our covenant with God that we're going to serve Him. Anything that's in our life that's affecting us in our relationship with Him, whether it, whatever it may be, if you're on Facebook too much, if I'm uh, texting too much, if, uh, if I'm watching TV too much, sure. anything like that can can distance you from God when yeah. you would rather be in His Word. Amen. And when you break down your altars, look what he does. He doesn't just break them, he destroys them. Right. He doesn't save it for no, He doesn't save a little piece that Come he can build up on. That's he right. brings it down to powder, destroys it completely, Amen. get it completely out of your life. No rebuilding it. Amen. 
13, in the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount Corruption. The Mount of Corruption. Well, oh, damn. My, my, my. That didn't even that sound right when I read it. I was like, <laughs> the Mount of Corruption. Which Solomon, the king of Israel, how built it. This is why it should Oh, yeah. Be. This is where Solomon got off because yeah. of his women. <laughs> and how built it for Ashtaroth, yep. the abomination of the Zidonians. Amen. And for Shemash, yep. the abomination of the Moabites. You know who Moab and is. for Milcom, the abomination of the children of hey, uh, Lot's kids. Did yep. the king defile. And he break in pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled their places with the bones Ooh. of men. My, my. While we're right there, where it says bones of men, remember earlier when I said what happened? How did he go from being a his yeah. dad and his grandpa to oh, being a good it. king. Yeah. I wrote my Bible, what happened? And then I found something else that is exactly why it happened. He brings your Bible because of the book, but if we look at 1 Kings 13, 1 Kings 13, there's another reason right here why it happened, because it was prophesied that it was going to happen, and this book doesn't lie. Amen. Okay. One to three. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon me shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon me. And men's bones shall be burnt upon me. So it was prophesied. Yeah. 300 years before Josiah was born, it was prophesied that a, a king would be, or a child would be brought up by the name of Josiah. And that he would break down the high places, break down the things that the, the, the altars that the priests have made and burnt incense. And men's bones shall be burnt upon him. So it tells us that 300 years before Josiah is even born. And, and here, it's taken place because it was prophesied. If it wouldn't have taken place, then it would have made first kings lying. And that don't happen in this book. Verse 3. Nope, I'm back in 2 Kings now. I'm back to 2 Kings. That was just to show you the prophecy that it took place then. Oh, the burnt bones are 14. So 14. And he break in pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel in the high place with Jeroboam, the son of Bath, who made Israel to sin. Remember that we heard? We heard, uh, the preacher talking about the sins of Jeroboam a few weeks yes. ago. This is talking about it too. But he made Israel to sin. Had made both an altar and the high place. He break down and burned the high place and stamped it, small to powder, and burned the grove. Here we see it again. He's not just breaking it. He's destroying it completely. That altar cannot be rebuilt. He breaks it down to powder. And Josiah turned himself. He spied the sepulchers that were there in the mount. And sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers. We just read this and burned them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed. That's talking about that prophecy that took place. Who proclaimed these words? Then he said, "What title is that I see?" And the man of the city told him, "It is the sepulchers of the man of God, which came from Judah, and proclaim these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel." So now he's looking at the sepulchre of a person who actually made that prophecy. And he said, let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone. With the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses of the, all, all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria. Which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger. Josiah took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in the theft. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. 
And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover until the Lord your God, as it was written in the book of the Congress. And here he's restoring the Passover that they had been doing right, and they, uh, who knows how long. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that the, that judge Israel. So it's telling us right here that it hasn't happened since the days of the judges, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, mm. nor the kings of Judah. But the 18th year of the king Josiah, wherein the Passover was holding to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law, which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart, and with all his soul, with all his might, wow. according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. So he He's one of the best kings that you ever had. It tells us right there that they haven't had a Passover like this since ever. Right. And he he does over he does fifty two reforms in this one chapter alone. Wow. And he brings revival to his nation. Mm -hmm. he, he brings revival by receiving the word of the Lord, yeah. believing the word of the Come Lord, on. and following the steps yeah, that is. the word of the Lord yeah. tells him to do. So revival comes in this because it was prophesied what he would do right and also because he took the book yes sir their bible yes sir. believed it and did according that was in it right Amen. and uh, i think we're going to end right there next week we're going to talk about nehemiah and there's a story that goes on just like this it's another story of revival and it just shows you again that the power that the word of the lord can bring right let's pray Father, we thank you for all things. We thank you that that where we're weak, you're strong. We thank you for this precious word, Lord. Oh, uh, I thank you for that soul that read that. Yes, trust, Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. For your work being done here, I pray that your thank hand you, would continue to guide us. I pray Jesus. that you would be glorified in all that we do. Yes, I pray each and every time someone gets behind this pulpit of wood, oh, God. that you'd be glorified and that your yes, hand would be upon them. Thank you for all so things. Girl. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's a great lesson.